Hey, it's Zisto. It's satisfactory. Buckle up, because today we're going for a ride. A ride, you say? That's right. We're going for a ride on a choo-choo train. So, two out of the three areas we need to build for our turbo motor mega base, we've finished them. And so today we're going to connect them up with the rail network. We gotta hook up this thing, which is supplied by all these things, and makes heat sinks, to this thing, which is supplied by all these things, and makes supercomputers and quartz crystals. And with their powers combined, we shall finally be able to construct radio control units. So the first thing we'll need to do is go to each of those builds and make a train station so we know where to hook up the rail to, how it's going to connect, and how to route it through the environment. We need a beginning point and an end point, basically. But before we do that, let's spend a minute, let's talk about railroads in Satisfactory and how we're going to build it, what style we're going to use, how they're going to look, all that kind of stuff. I set up an area here to tinker with some designs and to make sure that uh, the ideas I had would be plausible. So down here on the left, we've got two variations on a similar theme. We're going to use a two-lane system. That means one lane will have trains going one way, and the other lane will have trains going the other way. There is no collision for trains in Satisfactory yet. So that means we could just go with one lane like we've done previously and just let them phase right through each other. I'm basically going to do it this way because it's going to look a little bit nicer. No other reason. So, the only real difference between the two versions I've built here is how far apart are the rails. This one, the rails are two foundations apart, and the support structure is symmetrical. This one, the rails are one foundation apart, and the support is asymmetrical. And of the two, just looking at them, I pretty instinctively prefer the one with the rails close together, so that's the one we're going to build. So, in addition to deciding between these two versions, I've also built a few examples and test cases to make sure that the way I want to build the rail is possible and that I know how it's going to need to be built in terms of uh, the nuts and bolts of connecting the, the rail lines to each other and making the curves look clean and all that kind of stuff. So here's a test case for the heatsink train to split off from the main line and go down to a train station which may or may not be oriented at this angle, but the important part is that it can split off without intersecting or overlapping or clipping through the 3D models of other things. So it comes down here and it picks up heat sinks and then it goes under the rail line, or I guess in the actual instance it might go above it, and then it merges back onto the main line and heads off to where the supercomputers and the quartz crystals are. So the main thing to keep in mind when we're building rails in Satisfactory is to always try to connect any curved piece between two straight sections of rail. So for instance, if we delete these two pieces right here, we can see that we're left with three straight pieces and we can reconnect them just to show how nice that ends up, like so. Same thing goes for these two versions of S-Ben, where the difference between them is that I've staggered where the straight pieces are, so we can connect them with curve pieces, and we get a very nice curve because we've connected them between two straight sections of rail. Aha, but what happens when we start to build something a little bit more complicated, like over here, where we've got to split off a rail and we need multiple curved pieces, multiple curved pieces, in fact, connected to other curved pieces, which seems to break the rule I just mentioned about connecting curved pieces between two straight pieces. So over here on the right, I've got an unbuilt version, and we'll just walk through the process real quick to show you how it works. And the first thing we need to do is we need to reproduce this split off here. And to do that, we will need a straight section to connect to a straight section, just like we just showed. Whenever I create rail segments, I try to start and stop in the center of a foundation tile. This helps a lot with lining up things on these support pillars. And in general, just keeps everything nice and consistent. So first thing we do is connect those to create our first curve. Now that we have that curve, we delete the straight section, and this section is lined up perfectly straight. So it acts as a straight section even though it's not really straight. We delete this foundation tile, and we create another straight section on this ramp. There we go. Now that we got the ramp, we can connect this curve and create a new curve. The curve rule counts for vertical curves as well as horizontal curves. Down here at the bottom, we create a similar curve to flatten out the rail. And then we can delete this straight section, and we can go directly into a 90 degree to the right curve because the end of this segment is actually straight since we lined it up correctly. Then we can come back here and we can finish off the main line, reconnect it up to the stub I built over there. 
And the result is a smooth branching line with nice looking curves. Oh, it looks great. So with that out of the way, let's head out to the heatsink area and let's get started. So here we are at the heatsink part of the mega base. The heat sinks end up right here into this awesome sink, so we may as well place the train stop at that level. So there we go. I decided to lower it down a few foundations in height so that when we build the railroad that goes from here to the other side of the map, we can go through the forest and underneath the canopy, which will probably look way cooler than going above it in a big straight line. So this one's built. Let's head over to the supercomputer area. <laughs> Here we are at the supercomputer build, which is going to be making radio control units soon. We're going to need two train stations here, one to offload the heat sinks and one to load up the radio control units. So we could either stack them on top of each other, or I suppose because this build is quite wide, we could even put them side to side. So this is about the amount of space we need for one of the train stops, and it takes up a bit more than half of our horizontal space. So either we're going to have to have it stick out a bit, jut out into this open space there, or we're going to have to stack them on top of each other. I think I want them both on this side instead of trying to have a rail line go under or over all of these belts. So maybe it'll end up looking something like this. We've got the rail line coming in, and then it splits. One train can drop off the heat sinks. The other train can go around and pick up the radio control units. Then the line curves around, bypasses that train station. They remerge, and they can head off to the heat sink area and beyond for the turbo motor area, which will be beyond the heat sink area, way over there somewhere. But here's the thing. This rail line we're about to build, it's going to be really cool once it's done, but it's going to be really fiddly and take a long time to build, and I just don't feel like doing it myself. I thought about licking some more slugs, but that seems to have some diminishing returns built into it. Every time I do it, I seem to get a little bit more resistant to the effects. And then I thought to myself, what other options do we have? And like a bolt of lightning, or maybe a light bulb would be more appropriate, a light bulb above my head went off and I thought, aha! I can just split myself off into a separate, multi-dimensional person. And I can make that loser do all the hard work while we do something relaxing. Like, I don't know, let's say we take a nice, relaxing drive along the beach. So that's what we're going to do. And returning to the scene of the crime, seems like everything's been constructed. Oh, that's fantastic. I'm so nice to build that for myself. The rail line goes up there over the waterfall all the way down here. Okay, so let's get down here and let's actually turn the train on and send it off to pick up some heat sinks. And then to bring them back so we can finally, after all this time, start creating radio control units. We need to hop in the train. We need to hit the V button. And we tell it to go off to where it needs to go, which is actually there to pick up... No, actually it needs to pick up heat sinks. Then we tell it to come back to where it is, to the reagent station to create the next thing. Make sure the autopilot is on. And voila! Off it goes. Bye-bye, see you in a minute.
So finally, the two areas of our mega base have been connected. We've got heat sinks loaded into this manufacturer, combining with supercomputers and quartz crystals to create radio control systems, AKA the alternate recipe for radio control units. And they're headed off down the belt and they get dumped into, for now anyway, an awesome sink to make us some sweet, sweet, awesome sink points. And I have, I've got 400 tickets in here. We're generating at the moment 3 million points per minute. That seems pretty good, but it also seems a little bit slower than I thought. This should really be doing more. Let's fly up and let's check the line where they're being supplied via belt up here. Yeah, okay, we got heat sinks getting split up and then they get lowered down via belt lift. Okay, I have an idea here. Let's check our power consumption. Let me find a power line. You can't check it on these little guys. Let's click this. Yeah, look at that. We have the capacity for 96 gigawatts of power. We're only drawing 11 gigawatts. That doesn't seem quite right. For all these machines, how is that even enough? Wait, 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 wait a second. Wait a second. I just had an idea. I had an idea. A few things that we've been doing just combined in my brain like a nuclear fusion. Nuclear fusion just occurred. Two ideas. What if we use the slugs to help us build the base better so that we can figure out what's missing? But the problem with the slugs is the more I lick the slugs, the less effective they are. But aha, what other tools do we have? What if, what if instead of licking slugs sequentially, what if we lick the slugs simultaneously? Okay, okay, if we take a massive dose all at once, let's say if I split myself into seven pieces, that's never gone wrong for anyone before, if I split myself into seven pieces, and we lick seven slugs all at once. Oh, I bet that combined amount of total raw inspiration would let us charge up our base. We'd be able to figure out why it's going too slow. Okay. Here we go. Here we go. Time, Time seven. seven. By, By our, our powers, powers combined. combined. combined.
Well, that seems to be successful. We have a steady stream of radio control units going down the belt and into the awesome sink. Thanks to our newly found power shard technology. Unfortunately for us, the slugs have departed this realm, potentially never to return. There's not nary, there's not, I don't think there's a single one left anywhere. And if there is, he's hiding really effectively. We are averaging just about 10 million points per minute. And we're up to 454 tickets, so that's pretty cool. Our power drain has jumped up to about 35 gigawatts. That's pretty good. Hopefully we'll be generating some nice, juicy, lovely, delicious nuclear waste for our nuclear waste dump. That's pretty good. Unfortunately, we did end up using more than a thousand of the power shards. We only have a few hundred left. And the next area is going to have to be about 50% bigger than this one. Oh boy. But that's something I think we'll worry about another time. For now, we will just bask in the glory of our radio control unit production. And I will see you next time. Have a good day. Buh bye bye